All right, so what we have is we have two angles. We have sine of 60 degrees equals square root of 3 over 2, and cosine of 60 degrees equals 1 half. Now, there's a couple things I want you guys to remember um, that we're going to have to use for this. First of all, uh, we need to know our, you know, our trig, uh, trig properties, and we also need to know what our, um, uh, what exactly do we call them? Our co-functions of complementary angles. So what I'm saying is we need to understand that cosine of 90 minus theta is equal to sine of theta. And we also need to know that sine of 90 minus theta is equal to cosine of theta. All right? This was actually below your blue box. Uh, I'd recommend that you guys write these down if you didn't have them. If you look in the blue box on page 282, we have these written down. I told you guys to write down the blue box. I didn't mention these, but if you guys don't have these written down, I'd recommend you writing them down. I did go over last class period why this works. If you remember, you look at a unit circle. And let's see. This one is what we say for cosine. That's 60 degrees, right? And that's 30 degrees. So if you guys remember, this point was 1 half radical 3 over 2. This point is radical 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Right? On your unit circle, you guys remember those? Okay? Well, this angle, remember, is 60 degrees. And this angle is 30 degrees. Right? In degree form. We said this is pi over 6, and that's pi over 3. But 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Well, look at it. If I say, what is, um, you know, if I say, uh, I don't know, the cosine of 60 is, a, is cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. So the cosine of 90 minus 60 degrees is the same thing as, um, well, if cosine of 60 degrees is actually going to be the same as sine of 30 degrees. I'm sorry. Ninety minus sixty is cosine of sixty, right? Is cos ninety minus thirty is sixty? So the cosine of sixty degrees is the same thing as the sine of thirty. Let's see if that works. What is the cosine of sixty degrees? Cosine is your x value, right? The x value of this of this point is one half. And I said the cosine ninety minus sixty is ninety minus thirty is sixty. That's the same thing as cosine of sixty degrees. Cosine of 60, we just said, is the same as sine of 30. What is the sine of 30 degrees? One half. Okay. Huh? I'm confused on why yep. you're equaling it to sine of 30 degrees. What I'm saying is, if you look at this, the cosine of 60 degrees, right, is equal to the sine of 30 degrees. Do you see how those are both one half? Mm -hmm. The same thing. The cosine of 30 degrees is the same as the sine of 60 degrees, right? Yeah. So think of 60 and 90. 60 and 90 are what we call complementary angles, correct? 30 plus 60 equals 90 degrees. So what we're saying is these two functions, and it works for your secant and your, co and your uh, cotangent as well, but what I'm saying is if I know one angle in cosine and I subtract that from 90, what I subtract that from is going to give me my sine of that angle. They're equivalent, okay? So let's work at see how this is going to work for our problem. Because what it asks us to do is, for this problem, it actually asks us a couple questions. They want us to find So what they want us to do is they want us to find these angles. Well, let's think about it, guys. We only know what the 60 are for um, cosine and sine, right? We only know what those are. However, we know by our cofunctions, complementary cofunction identities, that what I can do is the sine of 60 degrees, if I plug that in, the sine of 60 degrees is the same thing as the cosine of 30 degrees. 
by plugging in by using these co-function identities. No? I get everybody with that? The sine of 60 degrees is equal to the cosine of 30 degrees. Let me go and show you. All right, let's look at it. If I, if I replace theta for 30, right, and I place theta over here with 30, 90 minus 30 is 60. The sine of 60 degrees is equal to the cosine of 30 degrees. Does that make sense? Okay. So therefore, if I say the sine of 60 degrees is pi over 3 over 2, and they tell me what is the cosine of 30, I know that these two are equal to each other, right? So this answer is very easy. The only thing you need to know is understand these complementary co-function identities. All right? Then let's look at the sine of 30 degrees. The sine of 30 degrees, let's put in, let's put in 30 degrees for here. The sine of 30 degrees is the exact same thing as 90 minus 30, well, it, which is 60. So the sine of 30 is the same thing as cosine of 60. Our original problem said cosine of 60 is 1 half. That make sense? Okay. Now, how do you figure out what tan of 60 is and what cotangent is? Well, we could actually create a right triangle and figure that out. That wouldn't be anything that'd be difficult to do. We could say, you know, sine is a 60 degree angle, which is um, square root of 3 over 2. You could create a triangle and figure out your uh, tangent and your cotangent. However, another way you guys can look at this is we also know that tangent is your sine over your cosine. And cotangent is equal to your cosine over your sine, right? Remember when you guys were finding coordinate points? We said like the x and the y, or the y and the x, right? Well, y represents your sine and your x represented your cosine. So tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent is cosine over sine. This is also in the blue box that I told you guys to write down. It's extremely important you guys have that stuff written down and handy to you. So if I know the sine, so if I want to find the tangent of 60, then that's going to be the sine of 60 degrees over the cosine of 60 degrees. Well, what's the sine of 60 degrees? Square root of 3 over 2 divided by the cosine of 60 degrees, which is 1 half. So that's sine of 60 degrees over the cosine of 60 degrees equals the tangent of 60 degrees. Well, I multiply by my reciprocal. Now those cancel out, and I'm left with the square root of 3. So now the cotangent, you guys, is just the reciprocal of that. So I'll just write, to simplify it, it's just going to be 1 over radical 3, which now I can rationalize the denominator and get radical 3 over 3. Okay? It's pretty difficult getting this stuff, but like I said, guys, it's just dealing with